Hi guys, it is getting to be an absolutely gorgeous day here in the end times of South Austin, Texas and the rest of the planet. We have made it to Tuesday, April 1st, 2014, April Fool's Day, one of my uh, favorite days of the year. I just finished my conspiracy wacky Tuesday rants uh, if you want to go check that one out but since I literally have nothing better to do with my time today here on April Fool's Day on the rock I'm just gonna sit right here on the rock possibly till the uh, camera runs out just to I don't know just share a little story with the five or six people wanting to listen to it uh, on the planet uh, April Fool's Day, I absolutely love April Fool's Day, not only because it tends to be beautiful weather in springtime, but uh, because I am proud to be a fool with a capital F, as I've mentioned before, my tarot card, what's it called, the Major Arcana tarot card that guides me through life is none other than the fool card i would not trade the fool card for any card in the deck because uh, anyone who understands the fool card knows that the fool has it figured out more than anyone else on this planet um, and I should have read uh, this extended quote as I've done before from my favorite fool in all of history, which would be Don Quixote. Don Quixote. Uh, anyway, I might do another rant about uh, Michael Cervantes, who f had it figured out, uh, when was it, in around the year 1600 what was shaping up on this planet as he looked around him and read the mainstream media headlines. But anyway, as you can tell, I'm just in a mood to sit here and ramble all jacked up in coffee. Anyway, what was I going to tell you about? Okay, I'm just going to tell you about just a little conversation I had in a car heading to a picking party last night with uh, my friend I will call uh, this friend Pollyanna. Uh, uh, no, she's not quite Pollyanna, but that, that, that word will suffice. Not a perfect fit. So Pollyanna, I guess I, there, there, there is no danger that she will ever hear anything I'm saying because Pollyanna has absolutely zero interest, zero interest in hearing one word I have to say uh, from this rock. Pollyanna is the closest I have ever come to finding a soulmate in my entire life on this planet. She has, she has and still does probably feel more of the uh, requirements of a soulmate than anyone I know. And back when I was a $100,000 a year real estate agent and she was a successful mortgage broker we were quite the team quite the team now I'm sad to report uh, that Pollyanna and I probably as much due to Humpty Dumpty tribe as anything we are drifting apart it breaks my heart that we uh, Anyway, I'm not going to go there uh, about Hambone's heart being broken by his soulmate. Uh, but we still do have a, a lot to talk about. And for some reason, uh, she still uh, chooses to spend time with me. So we were in the car, the, the little gas-sucking car that I sold her uh, when I stopped owning gas-sucking cars. We were in that car. Uh, driving to a picking party last night and Pollyanna regaled me with two stories which I think I've heard before she and I tend to repeat the same stories to each other you know how it is when you're with someone for how many years and you just start telling the same stories 
But anyway, it was good to hear. So I'm just going to briefly recap these two stories and my uh, in, in, in my response to them. Her first story that they both involve people that she has met in her past which put her in to an altered state of consciousness which lasted three days after encountering these people. And the first person she talked about me was I'm assuming a white woman. I have I, I'm just I'm taking a wild guess. Some uh, who I have never met, thank God, have no interest in ever meeting. Some one of these goddamn flibberty gibbet <clears throat> bliss clueless bliss ninnies going by the name of Luna Joy. Luna Joy. And so I guess that uh, she is one of, one of these insufferable, insufferable uh, bliss ninny white women claiming that she is somehow tied in with the goddamn Mayan Indian shamans or some unadulterated horseshit. If, 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 any, if any Mayan shaman has any interest in Luna Joy, it is in Luna Joy's pussy. Uh, let, let, let's cut to the chase here. Uh, Jesus Christ. Luna Joy, and I guess Luna Joy ha has some sort of contact with the star people. Uh, I even Pollyanna said when when she actually met up with Luna Joy, uh, which which Luna Joy charged her twenty five dollars for the experience to bask in the glow uh, of this clueless goddamn bliss ninny. <sighs> Luna Joy. I, I, I just love this shit, guys. That she was not even impressed. But afterwards, she glowed for three days. So anyway, I, 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 I assure you guys that I have no more interest in hearing one word out of Luna Joy's mouth. No more interest, even for free than she has listening to one word out of this dumb hippie doom and gloomer's mouth. I assure you that is the one thing that Luna Joy and Hammo Little Tail will agree with each other. We don't, uh, we don't want to hear one word that each other has to say. Uh, I have nothing uh, to learn from any clueless bitch named Luna Joy, and then Luna Joy has to uh, learn from Hambone Little Tail. But maybe I do or do not, would or would not have something to learn from the second man that Pollyanna was talking to me about, and this was a black homeless person that she met in downtown Austin, Texas a few years ago who gave her a flower. Uh, isn't that sweet? Uh, and Pollyanna is not quite sure, but she thinks, and maybe she's right, that this, this nameless, anonymous, black homeless person walking the streets of Austin, Texas after dark holding an orange zinnia looking for just the right person to give it to and I am quite sure that my pseudo soulmate Pollyanna was the right person to give it to and so anyway her angel gave her a flower and even though he did not charge her $25 to bask in his presence she was in an altered state of consciousness. Pollyanna was lit up uh, by this man, this, this uh, homeless person with a flower, walking the streets of Austin, 
And so she told me this story as we were getting, we were, as we were almost, we were just arriving to the pick and party, so we didn't have much time to continue the discussion, so I'm just going to continue it with myself now. And before I go into that, I, I, I just want to make it clear for the record, guys. Like if, if, if anyone, anyone has, has any doubt who Hambone Littletail would rather be locked in a room with some white woman named Luna Joy or some flower-toting black homeless man. If, if, if I had to choose which one of these people I would choose to spend one hour of my time with to see what I might have to learn from them. I think it's a no-brainer who I would choose. So anywho, so she's telling me that and I'm just uh, particularly with the Luna Joy when I'm just sitting over there in the passenger seat rolling my eyes rolling my eyes at, uh, at, at Pollyanna's latest story. Pollyanna is what I call an apocaloptimist. She, she, Pollyanna is not one of my clueless friends. She understands what is going on on this planet, well, to a degree, to a degree, but she is one of those apocaloptimists who think it's all gonna turn out fine anyway. So anyway, so she tells me these stories, and she can and she can tell that I have zero interest in anything that she's going to say. And she pretty much read my mind. When you spend as much time with a person as she and I have spent with each other, you can start reading each other's minds. And I think she already read uh, my mind before I made the comment uh, that implying that I had nothing to learn from either one of these guys because I already know everything. I already know everything. And I, I, wanna, I want to put that, that, that's where the conversation ended um, at that point with her reading my mind and me uh, laughing about I already know everything. And so I'm just going to uh, amplify that comment a little bit to mean to I already know everything that I need to know that I need to know about what is happening on this planet. I have already completely filled in my two job duties as doomsday prophet and environmental alarmist. I am 100% convinced on a cellular level that this global industrial civilization is coming down. I know this. This is no longer open for debate. The, the only thing left to figure out, as I was trying to tell her before we got interrupted, is, is the only thing that, that I don't know, the, the, is it the known unknowns or the unknown unknowns that I left, have left to fill in the blank is my role as the chronicler of the downfall of global industrial civilization that I, 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 I'm 100% convinced that it's coming down. There, there is no changing that. The only questions that I will be answering from this rock as I study everything from the mainstream media to the alternative media, occasionally checking in with the mushroom god and the San Pedro cactus god and the ayahuasca god, uh, is is not if global industrial civilization is, is going to crash and burn, but when, not if, but when it is going to crash and burn, and exactly what form it is going to take. 
whether is it going to be a smash into a brick wall and, and a collapse or is it going to be a stair step pattern uh, this is what I will be spelling out uh, right up until the day I die. Uh, I guess I will be chronicling it. The other questions that left to be seen uh, by, by the time it does collapse, sometime between now and the end of this century, uh, the, the, the other questions that I'm not sure of is not whether the population of this planet in the year 2100 will be 10 billion or 1 billion, but will the, the human population be 1 billion or zero? There is one question that I have not been able to prophesize with all of my study. Uh, there's evidence both for the zero and the one billion, but every day there is less and less evidence that the human population of this planet is gonna be anywhere close to 10 billion people in the year 2100. And of course, guys, the, the, uh, the biggest question of all, the single most important question of all, uh, as my hero Derek Jensen uh, continues to report is by the time global industrial civilization collapses the question is how much damage will it have done to the planet will we crash and burn early enough to save the planet and by the planet what I mean is every other one of our fellow Earthlings that we share this planet with that have been doing just fine for the past 65 million years until these dumb naked ape chimpanzees came along to screw it up for everybody and the ecosystems on which they depend. That's just a mouthful to say whenever I'm talking about the planet. That is what I mean by the planet. Pull your head out of your ass. I know goddamn well that this rock is going to be here long after, uh, long after global industrial civilization and every other species alive in 2014 has gone into wherever we're going to go next. That is the big question. And uh, despite the fact that I know all know everything that I need to know and everything from here on out is simply dotting I's and crossing T's you know coloring in the details of how the collapse is going to unfold on this planet I, I do have a, a, a short list of people that I still depend on to educate me. Uh, people meaning other than the mushroom, San Pedro, and ayahuasca gods. And of course, I'm just going to name a few names. Of course, number one on my list is the late great Terence McKenna, who more than anybody else figured out what was going on on this planet. Was just a couple of nights ago, I I put the latest uh, words of wisdom from Terence uh, about where we are as a species uh, in the beginning of the 21st century. We lost Terence uh, at the eve of the 21st century and nobody has been able to fill that man's shoes. But a few of the people, just in case you do not know these people, if you wonder who the people that this doomsday prophet does listen to very carefully who are still alive and well would be let's just pick a few names Graham Hancock there is there there, there is one uh, of my rock solid doomsday prophets who as far as I can tell understands as much as anyone on the planet what is going on uh, hallelujah, more power to you, Graham. Next, I would put my buddy not quite in the level of Graham Hancock and, uh, and Terrence McKenna, but my 
buddy Max Egan, that's I-G-A-N, from Australia. Uh, Max, his basic foundation is rock solid. The man understands what is going on on this planet. The, my, my mild criticism of Max Egan, as much as I love the man, I have actually uh, donated my land in Peru to Max Egan. I'll be talking about that more in the future. Max Egan is a climate change denier, at least a man-made climate change denier, and he gets a little wacky in his conspiracy theories. He's a little bit too far down some of the rabbit holes and the wacky conspiracy theory, and he is clueless about man-made climate change. But other than those blind spots, hallelujah, Max Egan. Another man, uh, I, and I'm sorry that I just keep throwing out the names of white males, but I, 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 I'm, I'm really embarrassed, but this is, this, this is how they're rolling off my tongue, would be Derek Jensen. And uh, one of my all-time favorite Bibles of the apocalypse called Endgame. Uh, if you have not read Endgame by Derek Jensen, Derek Jensen, uh, he's, he's damn well clued in uh, for the need to bring down industrial civilization, the sooner the better, to save the planet. I still have a lot to learn from this man. Derek's only blind spot, uh, as I've mentioned uh, many times, as much as I love and respect uh, Derek Jensen and the work he does, he is completely deluded by the noble savage fantasy. I am quite sure that Max Egan and maybe even Graham Hancock suffer the delusion of the noble savage fantasy. Uh, yeah, Graham, you, probably even Graham Hancock falls into that when everyone has their blind spots. Okay, who else? Well, let's look at uh, one man who does not suffer from the, uh, the noble, savage, golden age fantasy, and that would be my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Jared Diamond. Uh, for the past four Sundays, I have been preaching the gospel of Jared Diamond, who understands damn well what is going on on this planet and understands damn well uh, about the, the myth of the global, of the noble savage fantasy. Now, where Jared Diamond falls apart at the end of every one of his books is that he is a hopeless apocaloptimist. Jared Diamond understands as much as anybody on this planet, as much as, as Derek Jensen and Hambone Littletail understand uh, what is going on on this planet, yet he still is an apocaloptimist. He thinks there is still a fighting chance that we can pull ourselves out of this train wreck. This is where uh, Jared and I always part company in the last few pages of every one of his Bibles of the Apocalypse. Uh, anyway, guys, I could go on here. I just wish I could, you know, I wish I could think of someone other than white men. We've got David Attenborough. We've got James Lovelock. Ah, finally! I do have an Asian man, David Suzuki, finally. Uh, but of course he was raised in the white culture, so he's kind of like one of those, those peanut butter Oreos where he's yellow on the outside and white on the inside. But at least David Suzuki understands, although he's a little bit of an apocaloptimist himself, and the man know, should know better. So, uh, anywho's, maybe I do need to go spend some time with this black homeless person down there on the streets of Austin, Texas, 
and so I could put him in uh, the group of my heroes. But I guarantee you one clueless bitch who will never land in, in my group of heroes, and that would be anybody. I don't give a damn what color you are, what sex you are. If you're calling yourself Luna Joy, you are a clueless bliss ninny who has no concept of what is happening on this planet. Anyway, since I understand there's probably at most one people on this planet who is stuck with me to the end of this rant. What am I going to title this rant? April Fool Claims I Know Everything Rant. As the sirens move in, they're coming to get me. So I'd better run from the police state and wrap up this April 1st, 2014 rant and say bye guys, or probably bye guy, if there's anyone left. Bye guys.